Infinity is counterintuitive to us, making it extremely difficult to understand. But out of the many benefits it gives us, it also opens up the world of seven indeterminate forms. Before delving into them, let's build up from the relationships that arise from these three values. Infinity, zero, and one. I remind you, common sense is a poor guide when it comes to the infinite. The idea that endlessly dividing a number results in zero can intuitively make sense. Because as you divide a number into smaller and smaller parts, each part becomes increasingly tiny, seemingly approaching zero. And that's why equations like 1 over 0 equals infinity and 1 over infinity equals 0 still exist in older textbooks, when the denominator of a fraction becomes very small, approaching but not reaching 0, the result of the division becomes very large. This pattern suggests that the denominator gets infinitesimally close to 0. The fraction itself appears to grow to infinity. But in whatever context it is used, Division by zero is meaningless. There's only one exception to that, but we're not going to get into it here. Suppose we try to divide 5 by zero. Say we call the hypothetical outcome x. In order for that to be true, so must this expression. Zero times x equals 5. But anything times zero is equal to zero. So the outcome, whatever value we pick for x, would be zero equals 5, which is of course not true. Hold on a minute, have you ever thought of why is it that when you multiply something by zero, it results in zero? The logic is pretty simple, actually. Multiplication is fundamentally repeated addition. Each term you're adding is the multiplicand, and you're adding it as many times as the multiplier indicates. When you multiply zero times five, you're essentially adding five zero times. Since no addition occurs, the result is zero. On the other hand, 5 times 0 means adding 0 together 5 times. Even though addition occurs, since each term added is 0, the result remains 0. Anyway, that leaves us at 0 equals 5 being an absurd result. And therefore, we also cannot have 5 divided by 0. But what about dividing 0 by 0? Again, this puts us at 0 times x equals 0. x can be absolutely any number. A unique answer does not exist in this case, so the operation is declared as invalid. And so we go back full circle to the expression 1 over 0 equals infinity, since 1 divided by 0 is meaningless. It is still true that in the expression 1 over x, when x approaches 0, the x becomes larger and larger. This is properly expressed as this limit. The limit of 1 over x, as x tends to 0 from right to left, is infinity. Thus, both the zero and the infinity are essential for mathematics, but their roles would be incomplete without a third element, the number one. This number generates all positive integers by successive addition. Thus, all three elements have three unique roles on the number line. The zero is the starting point, one is the scale used, and infinity shows us the completeness of the line, since it includes all real numbers. Together, these three lead us to a very interesting concept in mathematics, known as indeterminate forms. These forms arise when the limits of functions lead to expressions that do not immediately suggest a clear or obvious result. There are seven standard indeterminate forms. If you're enjoying this video so far, please do not forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel. We've already discussed one of them, zero over zero. That's an indeterminate form. Well, 0 over 0 is the same thing as saying 1 over infinity divided by 1 over infinity, which can be transformed into 1 over infinity times infinity over 1, which simplifies to infinity over infinity. Thus, infinity over infinity is an equivalent of 0 over 0 and is an indeterminate form. In order to explore its limits, let's say we have the expression 2x plus 1 over x minus 1. There are infinite values we can pick, so let's pick all of the possible ones and say that x tends to infinity. Our intuition might tell us that we should substitute x for infinity. When we do, everything just results in infinity over infinity. Well, that doesn't tell us much, right? Without further analysis, it's unclear what the limit of this infinity is. We need to simplify the expression by dividing x from top and bottom. Remember, since x tends towards infinity, the x becomes infinity. So 1 over infinity is the same as saying 0, which is more accurately expressed as the limit of 1 over x as x goes to infinity is 0. Anyway, since 2 plus 0 is 2 and 1 minus 0 is 1, the answer is 2. 
One might say that infinity over infinity is the same as 2, but obviously that's absurd. So through the second calculation, despite x tending towards infinity, we found that it will not surpass 2, so 2 is the limit. Now we have another case, infinity minus infinity. It might be tempting to say that anything minus itself results in 0, but infinity minus infinity doesn't mean the number minus the same number, because infinity doesn't represent any fixed number. So we cannot say that infinity minus infinity equals 0. Its value cannot be determined. Therefore, it is indeterminate. The problem with infinity minus infinity arises because it's unclear how fast each infinity is reached and whether these rates are comparable. For example, if one infinite quantity grows faster than another infinite quantity, subtracting the slower growing infinity from the faster could result in another infinity, a finite number or zero, depending on the functions that are involved. Consider the limit of the difference between two functions as x approaches infinity. As x tends to infinity, x squared increases much faster than x. Thus, x squared and x both tend to infinity, but at different rates. The x squared term grows quadratically, so it dominates the linearly increasing x. We can still simplify the expression. As x becomes larger, the term x minus 1 is almost the same as x, since subtracting 1 doesn't change anything when we're dealing with very large quantities. Hence, the product x times x minus 1 is approximately x squared, which clearly tends to infinity. Now, consider another scenario where the difference isn't as straightforward. Here, the x squared terms cancel each other out, and what remains is the limit of x as x tends to infinity is infinity. In all these cases, the outcome always varies based on every unique situation, because the infinities are different in size. Let's now consider 0 times infinity, or infinity times 0, which is the same thing. I mean, isn't that the same thing as adding 0 an infinite number of times? So shouldn't the answer be 0? Well, no. We will again use the same 0 over 0 form to prove this. We already know that 1 over 0 equals infinity. Now 0 divided by 0 equals 0 times 1 divided by 0, which is equal to 0 times infinity. Since 0 divided by 0 is an indeterminate form, 0 times infinity is also an indeterminate form. The core issue with 0 times infinity is that you have one factor shrinking towards non-existence, while the other expands without bound. Depending on the rates at which these changes occur, the product might converge to a finite number, remain 0, or even grow to infinity. Consider this limit. The fraction 1 over x approaches 0 as x tends to infinity. This term represents the 0 in 0 times infinity. x squared grows towards infinity as x goes to infinity. This term represents the infinity in 0 times infinity. The product 1 over x times x squared is x, which tends to infinity as x goes to infinity. Here, despite the zero factor and the infinity factor, the result is an infinite limit. This example shows that the zero factor doesn't necessarily win over the infinite growth of the second factor, and it depends on how these rates of change balance out. But that isn't the case in other examples. Consider this function. The numerator x grows indefinitely as x approaches infinity. The denominator 1 plus x squared also grows indefinitely due to the x squared term. At first glance, one could think that this can be simplified to an expression involving infinity over infinity. But the rates at which the numerator and the denominator grow are different. To observe the 0 times infinity form, consider the reciprocal of the function, which is this. Here, as x approaches infinity, 1 over x approaches 0, and x approaches infinity combining to form the 0 times infinity indeterminate form. Return to the original function. You can evaluate this directly or recognize that the quadratic term in the denominator will dominate. As x approaches infinity, the limit of 1 over x as x goes to infinity is 0. This limit shows how this multiplication 0 times infinity can resolve to a definite finite number, in this case 0. But how about this? What if we raise infinity to the power of 0? Intuition tells us anything raised to the power of 0 is 1. The operation means taking something that grows without bounds and raising it to a power that traditionally nullifies growth. 
The core issue here is defining how a boundless base is restrained by zero exponent, which inherently lacks clarity without a limiting process. We know that a to the power of zero, using the quotient rule of exponents, can be written as a over a. In the same way, infinity to the power of zero can be written as infinity divided by infinity, which is an indeterminate form. Thus, infinity to the power of zero is an indeterminate form. As always, infinity to the power of zero will lead to a different answer based on the conditions we set up. Consider the limit of a function that could represent this form. The base 1 plus 1 over x approaches 1 as x goes to infinity, while the exponent x approaches infinity. This right here is the definition of the number e, which in itself deserves its own video. But basically, this setup is a classic form for illustrating an exponential growth. Now, remember how we said 1 is an essential part of the relations between infinity and 0? Well, one of the indeterminate forms is 1 to the power of infinity. At a superficial level, one might think 1 raised to the power of infinity should remain 1, since it's 1 multiplied by itself an infinite number of times. But since infinity is not a number, we have to treat it like a function that infinitely approaches 1. If we take a number that is less than or very close to 1, then multiplying it by itself an infinite number of times gives a very, very small number and is approximately equal to 0. If we take a number that is greater than and very close to 1, then multiplying it by itself an infinite number of times gives a very, very big number and is approximately equal to infinity. It means the limit of x to the power of infinity as x goes to 1 does not exist because its left-hand limit is 0 and the right-hand limit is infinity. Hence, if we get 1 to the power of infinity after the substitution into the limit, it means that we have got an indeterminate form. As always, unless we give it more conditions, we'll never know which pool wins. The last one's probably the weirdest, 0 to the power of 0. It's a particularly interesting one because it doesn't neatly fit into any straightforward rule. Since any number a to the power of 0 is equal to 1, this should therefore mean that 0 to the power of 0 is 1. But also, if we say that 0 to the power of a will always be 0, it would mean that 0 to the power of 0 equals to 1 is the same as 0 to the power of 0 is equal to 0, which of course isn't true. But when both the base and the exponent are 0, the results conflict. The question becomes whether the all powers of 0 result in 0 rule overrides the anything raised to the 0 power equals 1 rule, or vice versa. We need more in order to determine the value. Take this limit. It evaluates to x to the power of x equals e to the power of x times the ln of x. As x goes to 0 from right to left, x times ln of x goes to 0, because ln of x approaches minus infinity slower than x approaches 0, which leads us to the fact that the limit of e to the power of x times ln of x, as x goes to 0 from right to left, is e to the power of 0, or what's the same, 1. We always stress the fact that the best way to learn math is by practicing it and solving problems. And yes, I know that not all of us have the discipline to start studying at home for hours right away. But starting for just a few minutes a day is the first step towards learning. And you can do it right now with the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. With thousands of lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and artificial intelligence, Brilliant transforms passive learning into an active, engaging experience. Whether you're far ahead or just starting out, by dedicating a few minutes a day consistently, even if it's on your smartphone, you can enhance your visual and spatial problem-solving skills. Brilliant excels in areas like calculus, crucial for understanding the seven indeterminate forms we talked about today. Every course on Brilliant is designed to deepen your understanding and solidify your skills through fun and challenging interactive explorations that provide instant feedback. So if you're eager to dive deeper into math and other subjects, head over to brilliant.org slash to start your free trial or use this QR code. Plus, by using our link, you're gonna get an exclusive 20% off of your annual membership. This video was inspired by the introduction in chapter 1 of this book. Link in the description. Also, do not forget that we added a PDF link in the description below. Remember, the only true way to learn math is by understanding each step and then trying to reproduce it by yourself 
independently. So please check the PDF link below and study it by yourself. And if you like this video, I'm pretty sure you're gonna like this one. See you guys there.